we're going into major situations where the weather's deciding how we're going to live and who we're going to be and where we're going to where we're going to live and how we're going to live. The the ice caps are going to crack. They're going to literally just snap, and that will be the beginning of the floods. This is a warning to you that the floods are coming. Um, eat in here and do something about it, and stop wearing shoes. When you stop wearing shoes, it's a signal that you want to listen to the Earth Mother. It's a damn fact. Take off your shoes. Stop wearing rubber or wear something that is not rubber so you can feel the planet talking to you. The planet has a message. It's screaming out very loud right now. Um, how I tune into that, you know, oftentimes just having a little smoke really helps a yogi to feel his body. You know, the herb is a feeling herb. It allows us to feel more. Like, if you're in a group of people and nobody smoked, but if you're in a room full of people who smoke the herb, it's a completely different vibe. It, it takes down the front that we put on and opens our heart more, opens our right side of our body, allows us to be more friendly, open, and intimate. Um, the herb has helped me countless times. It's my greatest teacher. It's literally my greatest teacher. If I take the herb into my bloodstream, I do feel an inner awakening, a, a sound resonance, a, a completion, as it were. Um, so, the Most High. Meditation, as we say, um, that a little meditation helps. The more we can meditate, the more we less medicate, right? So, I meditate hours a day. I don't know quite. Uh, let me see. I try to go 24. Um, I really try to follow the breath and watch how my, the openings through my nas nasal passages and through my ears and the top of my head, the sides of my, the, the open through the, 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 the front of the chest. There are certain channels that actually are main vortexes or meridians or uh, points where we want to actually keep them open and let them be open. Then the breathing can actually stop. Yeah. This is one of the tools that helps. So when you sit, you're sitting up, and you see the angle, you really, now when people sit in meditation, how do they sit? Well, most people just sit in their sit bones, and their, their structure isn't there. The structure needs to be there aligned with the pleasure principle. So I'm gonna give you the t second tip of the day, is rotate the hips forward as much as possible and plant the perineum to the floor. See, when you touch the, the, the sexual energy and you put a little pressure there where you can actually feel it, it puts pressure on your brain. And that connection, that fluid connection of pressure, actually allows, the, you might say, the circuit to connect and, and to cycle. So a lot of people can sit for days, years, and weeks and years and not get it. But when you get it, you get the current, that's why we're sitting to meditate. So you should be much happier and blissful when you come out of meditation rather than more frustrated because you didn't get there. So when you sit and tilt the hips, get the spine as straight as possible, lift up on the chest, lean back, and find this orientation where everything just sits, and it sits comfortably, and you can maintain it. And the body will also give you what's called um, adjustments. It'll tell you, okay, chin higher, higher. Inhale deeply, inhale, inhale. Now, I'm, I'm doing the inhale breath, the constant, or the aha breath, where you, you're constantly inhaling. The pressure is always going in, 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 and you're dissolving in that emptiness of, of presence, of just ah, the breath, the breath. But when you're sitting here trying to meditate, sometimes you're trying to get the breath in, you're getting the breath out, get the breath in, you're trying to adjust to really deal with it. And then maybe in a half hour you're laying down because the pressure of your body is too heavy on all the painful areas, the torques, the, tw the old injuries, places the knees. It's like a lot of you can't even be in a proper position for one minute. That's why the yogis are all interested in the joints being open and clear because if that knee can come over and that top of the foot can come up facing the ceiling is what you want to do. Is, is why the, the feet come up to the ceiling, it calms the mind's interpretation to the earth, and it's like, check, okay, now I can go deeper inside. Okay, so position like this should be easy because I'm open through this channel. The, the, the gallbladder 
and the bladder channel is open. The, st the stomach doesn't have too much pressure in it, so I'm able to get into that. That's why a yogi eats very little, if anything at all, because food is actually a, a physical hindrance. It's an obstacle. It creates obstacles. It causes the yogi to leave more of his cave and find, like prowling like a cat. So food is also something that wins, needs to be dialed in, either had it brought to you or have it dialed into where you just find a few weeds or air even. Aritarian. Think about it. Being a breatharian, that's where we're going. Yeah. Anubis, the Greek god in Egyptian lore, is he is there at the door of life and death. And he holds a scale in his hands. And the scale is and just a scale weighing the substance of life. Yet in one scale is a feather. Today we have two. Just because it's 2000, 21st century, we need, a, we need an extra feather, come on. One feather wasn't enough. And then the other is your heart. And the scale at the door of life and the gate of death is weighed. And if your heart has any more attachments or un, unwedded business, unwedded meaning, somehow we want to be married to something connected, then you maybe come back here. I want everybody to work everything out immediately, like consistently, get rid of, have as much of everything as possible, and have that Big Mac attack and get it over with, because if we need to move to the next level, which is now to empty the cup, our heart, out into the world, and give back, and, and just proliferate, and, and lose, lose what we've accumulated and see that who and what we really are is nothing. We just, we're just a bunch of clowns wearing idea suits of the mind and the idea suits tell us who we are because we've got a credit card that tells us who we are and how much we have. Well, all these licenses are actually doomsday devices to your perfection is in resurrecting and cutting the card. And I would actually say that now it's time to get rid of your identity. Identity. <laughs> I spit that. Identity. I. The iPod. This whole I revolution generation. It's now time to become more a we. And we, if you turn it around upside down, is me. So we need to be so, so concerned about ourselves right now about this temple, this toxic temple. Everybody's just filthy as hell. Did you?